Wholesale. 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 Cherokee greeting. Wave the great feather. For the good of it. Well, if you were up and about this week during the evening, you would have seen the moon coming up. It was a big, big moon. I don't know, just a few days ago. So that's a main feature this month. This is the month of moon. In particular, the name called the Sturgeon Moon. I'll get to, get to that. But I'm going to start out with this moon. It's also the month of the blue moon. In other words, we got two moons this month. So I'm going to start out with this, with the moon, looking up here to the top, <coughs> here. Uh, what you're looking at here, this is rather rare, from Sonora, this is a Yaqui um, moon mass, Mecha Makara is, is called. It's very, it's very, very interesting, very rare, I would say, by this time. But I do have it here to be the moon. Now the way that it is, you know, function, is that when a woman is giving birth, and at night, and we'll say in the middle of the night, like around midnight, and that the constellation of the Pleiades is at, you know, its ascent, that it's up at the top, like that. That's when she's wearing this mask. Now the, the mask itself has, you know, seven uh, circles or bindis around it for the Pleiades. Interesting, in Yaki, the name for that the ladies' constellation is Tekoi, which means the vulture. Uh, the Yaqui's ancestors have stemmed from ancient Egypt, where the vulture, Mut, is the mother. So you can kind of see how that, that goes together. And here, this little bit, uh, Hokewin is woman in the moon. Hokewin is the Lakota for woman in the moon. We all went to our moon mother. Ho, 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 hey, hooray, medicine bundle, sacred bundle, by means of your wise thought. There, rising eastward, our moon mother is speaking. She gives her words, so saying to us, that when we went up there with dragonfly, we entered upon her road. Hey, hooray, mud pie moons, her gifts of flowing silt, the two stars are singing this to all our medicine bundles here now. Hum, 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 hum. That low lane coyote star says this to all sacred bundles here and now. Hum, 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 hum. By our moon, moon mom's word from heart's pond all the way to dawn's lake, our paths are complete in old age beauty. So says Coyote here now. Hum, 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 oh, ho, ho. So with that, we're going to come over here like this. Uh, this is my piece for this month, the Sturgeon Moon. And uh, because we have two moons, I have the two Sturgeons here. Now Sturgeon is a very, very ancient, ancient creature, fish. Um, two million years old. <laughs> so very, very ancient like that. <clears throat> and this little bit will give us a clue. What is the importance of the sturgeon moon? As the ancient sturgeon rises, so older parts of ourselves. These parts may have been hidden for a long time. Now's the time to catch this fish and to see our Face to face are deeply held feelings, liberating bound up emotions and old memories that we might now even realize that are having an intimate impact on our daily lives. <clears throat> so all along, especially with Coyote, where I'm always concerned with uh, bringing up these things that are very ancient, very deep, very old in memories, you know, that we can uh, maintain our continuance. That is the definitely Cherokee uh, function, prerogative, and goal to keep that going. So all of this, you know, is for this, for the Sturgeon Moon. That really has a lot to say about it. <clears throat> the Sturgeon Moon is the name given to the full moon that occurs in August. It's named after the sturgeon fish that are abundant in the Great Lakes and Lake Chaplain at this time of year. 
The sturgeon moon is also associated with the harvest season, spiritual matters, and innovation. Some people believe that the sturgeon moon has a special influence on their lives and emotion. This year, the sturgeon moon will be a super moon. We saw that, meaning it will appear larger and brighter than usual in the night sky. That is why I'm featuring it. Uh, it's named for the full moon in August, given by the Algonquins who lived in northeastern United States in the Great Lakes region. It signifies a time when sturgeon, a large and very ancient fish, were abundant and easy to catch in those lakes. It also marks the end of the summer and the beginnings of the harvest season when fruits, corn, grain were ripe and ready to be gathered. The sturgeon moon has spiritual meanings of gratitude, reaping the harvest, and perseverance for the future. For Native America, this is very, very poignant. We really want to think about this really a lot here. <clears throat> So that's the way that I can start this. Uh, the other part of my theme here is Turtle Island. Turtle Island is the name that we have for uh, the North American continent as geographically uh, termed here. <clears throat> and the way that it came about. Uh, here, this is my painting here. You focus on here. That this, I'm going to read it to you, but this is a uh, Sky Woman as she is um, descending from way up there towards the, the earth and the earth was all covered with water uh, like that. And many other traditions have, have the same same theme going. Um, and here this is uh, the eagle, it can be thunderbird or eagle for what is way up there in the heavens on Cherokee and Kalundlati, what we call that. So, you're focused on that when I, when I read this. Uh, uh, Turtle Island, Turtle Island in Dakota is Keawita, Keawita, uh, for one of our names for our country. Turtle Island isn't just an island with the name of turtle, but the way of it, how it came to be. Up there in the sky world, the world where are also the eagles lives Sky Woman. And this event she takes of herself to look down through the sky window at the earth, which in that very early age was totally immersed in water. And there she saw herself mirrored in the blue of the water. Something deep within her said to take the leap. And so she did and in the form of a woman. She wafted down, while at the same time the great mother, sea turtle, buoyed up to the surface of the water and allowed thereby for Sky Woman to land first feet on the back of her turtle shell, whereby she became fertile. We of Turtle Nation now remember this story to remind us to maintain a buoyant mind. Get that, get that message there. there. <clears throat> so that is a way to start this and the way that in Native America that we try all kind of ways to remember this. Uh, also, you have to consider that uh, Turtle Island, you know, had been entered in, in a, in a ruthless way, and through the back door, by the way, um, by people from Europe who have sought to um, destroy everything uh, that's indigenous and native here. And so uh, we really have to take that in consideration as to uh, what we still have maintained to continue with. And uh, Don Juan, he used the terms of the uh, tonal, the tonal, you know, the, would be like the empirical reality, to put it simply, you know. Um, he said that the invaders, you know, began by destroying the tonal of the land, and then they have continued to destroy the tonal in every individual. 
So that has to be in consideration for what we do have to remember and to present and think about here. So this is the way that I'm starting with, um, with the Turtle Island here. <coughs> uh, so some of the things that, that I have here for is you looked at my rendering here for the great mother sea turtle. And if we can go up here to this piece, in Cherokee, in Cherokee, this is a Dakshi. Dakshi is the constellation turtle. Dakshi is turtle, but the constellation for the turtle is the belt of Orion, the three stars in Orion, so that we have that uh, celestial uh, <coughs> image for the turtle to remember by. <coughs> And also, also, down here, you know, I have some some artifacts, you know, for that. You know. uh, here, if we can look at this little one here, uh, this is from out here in Anza Borrego. This has, for thousands and thousands of years, been the habitat of the people we are called the Mudawita or the Kawia here. And it's a, it was a stone turtle. It looks like it was for making uh, some herbs, you know, grinding stone. That's the way it looks. A wonderful shape like that. And over here, opposite here, this is a ceramic turtle. This is a Navajo. <clears throat> it's been signed by Ella Manigotes over there in Arizona, uh, how the turtle figures. In the Navajo, the turtle shell uh, is really used a lot, you know, for uh, potions, you know, in the, the, the medicine uh, chat ways, you know, so very much it, it, it is uh, that sort of thing. We can go all the way over here to this is a small turtle shell rattle. Now I have this here to to say about how that, you know, the turtle shell, uh, Kayaho is the way I'm going to call it, uh, like that, is figured. <clears throat> Besides using it as a receptacle, um, and especially for medicines, uh, Phosphate Society, of which I've been initiated into, uh, uses this much larger one. This is a small one for me, uh, like that. So the turtle shell, and also uh, uh, in the Cherokee, women uh, kind of strap the shells on their legs and do a kind of dance where they, you know, stomp, stomp, and really hit hit that that beat with the turtle. So all these ways that we continue to remember. There are turtle plants uh, among uh, certain people and ways to re remember all of these things. When I come over here, if we can look at th this piece here, <clears throat> um, we can put a flashlight on it. This is my oldest piece here. This is a pipe from over 2,000 years ago from that culture they call Adena Hopewell. <clears throat> and this kind of pipe is called a platform pipe. And as um, far as I know, it's the only style of pipe anywhere in the world of like this. I have several of them. They're very rare because they're usually broken. And um, this one is of a turtle, so that I can say, you know, this is, you know, of our our culture of the turtle 2,000 years ago. What I have with this, this is you know, almost 100 years old Hopi basket you can see with the turtle. The Hopi uh, basket uh, culture is still very vital, very much alive, and very important to uh, certain things that they make these baskets for. They're not just uh, functional, but actually in gifts and for babies and things like that. So we can put those two things t together. <laughs> and we go over here and look at this piece. Uh, this is from India. This is bronze or, or brass. Now in India, the, the turtle is very celebrated, very, very old. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to say very well regarded. There are many omelets made of the turtle of all kinds. I've had them. Uh, some of them must be very, very old here. So how the way the turtle in India is called kurma. And is originally, you know, feminine. You know, a feminine principle 
uh, and I think also in Native America, uh, that he is she, a feminine principle, uh, and very, very ancient in India. <clears throat> in fact, let me go over here to this piece here. <clears throat> this is a ceramic turtle. <clears throat> this is, uh, I would say, a votive turtle. It has uh, I like a gold leaf applied to it. <clears throat> the shrine or temple for this is Sri Kerman. Kerman is on the coast of uh, Andhra Pradesh near Bashkapatan. And uh, <clears throat> the original temple uh, is 2,000 years old. So company with my 2,000 year old pipe here. Um, and was re-consecrated a thousand years ago by the uh, Vedic Vedanta the scholar Ravana Duja. <laughs> uh, but it's still, it's still going. And so here, what I've done here, I have replicated, in a sense, from a photograph, the original, what they call Murti. Uh, it, it's much larger than my, my little piece here, but it is to look like, from the photograph, the shrine image, you know, uh, that is made of two rocks that are coming out of the ground. They aren't rocks that someone placed there like mine. Uh, they're actually coming up out of the ground and uh, still is very venerated, still going for at least 2,000 years. Now, the primeval uh, turtle there uh, also seems to be known anciently as Kashiapa. They don't know what that means, but the name Kurma uh, was given to the turtle by Vishnu to mean deed, like the deeds. And the deeds, I think, that's figured in the mythology of uh, the Hindus is in the creation of the world. <laughs> and in the creation of the world, Vishnu, as the tortoise Kurma, took the part of the fulcrum upon which a mountain was mounted and the deities, you know, round a big snake around the mountain, you know, as this kind of spindle and they pulled back and forth and back and forth and made a turning. So even when I attended the Vedanta temple um, in San Francisco, uh, this was still, you know, very, very vibrant telling of the uh, churning of the ocean and all that was created out of it. So the deed in this case, you know, was that the uh, turtle was the fulcrum for this uh, kind of creation. Uh, in other other stories, like the one I just said, of how, how uh, Sky Woman, you know, came down uh, from the sky, and and the turtle came up, and and, and they got together and create created the earth. So basically, the turtle is, you know, a womb, a beginning. In the science of, of the Vedas, or I guess should say Veda Hindu, what we have is you have this huge pluralistic country called India. <clears throat> and in fact, India itself is conceived as resting on the turtle. <laughs> Actually, the turtle is holding up India <laughs> like that. And it appears to be totally a feminine, matriarchal, and all of that. Pluralistic, you know, that has had many nations. And entering into that uh, pluralistic world at some time in the past, debatable, when, uh, were people from Iran. So they called themselves the Aryans. And the Aryans were cattlemen and decidedly patriarchal. Uh, the feminine didn't figure too much, you know, in their mythology uh, like that. And gradually this uh, patriarchy I could say, kind of blended in and kind of took over uh, the feminine aspects, although many of the feminine aspects have managed to continue and to survive, and you have to watch out for what once have been mutilated, because that has happened also. And so you definitely have to uh, look carefully at that to discern what is original in the feminine and what has been, you know, redacted to it to favor the patriarchy or the masculine. Vishnu is decidedly, even though ancient, is a Vedic deity like that. 
and very, very, very much of her has been blended into him here, uh, including Lakshmi. But he's mostly famous for being Avatar. Avatar is the Sanskrit word for descend, that is, descend from up there, you know, into the world of people or the earth uh, nature like that. And so his first, you know, incarnation, to put it that way, was the turtle, Kerma, like that. That's where he did the, the churning. His second one was the uh, uh, Devantari. Devankari was the first medicine man. So his symbol is, you know, like the pestle and mortar, you would say. But that's very interesting as to having a first uh, medicine person uh, enter into this, we'll call it pantheon. Here in Native America, uh, the defacement, you know, by the people from uh, Europe, which Don Juan in his book has referred to as uh, <laughs> these uh, foreign, foreign innovations, for foreign office installations, that's what it was, foreign installations that um, are maintained by a foreign mind. That's very, very remarkable uh, that he could say that and know that. <laughs> so uh, Native America is, you know, very, very consciously working to try and bring our parts together. So back to India, where the turtle, Kerma, is also called Kerma Sakti. Sakti means it's like a feminine energy. So Kerma Sakti is also the, quote, Samgreha, Samgreha, meaning to bring things together to the core seed. So here the turtle is figuring, you know, actually as a very vital, you know, seed that still continues and can re Re-energize, basically, is what we would say with it. If we can go over here, I have another person here. There she is. This is Moana. You all know, you know, seen <laughs> the movie production of Moana. Moana means ocean, or Moana Nui is the um, great ocean. And here, uh, through the Polynesian uh, culture, she and the turtle, Hanu, have still maintained a relationship that is very ancient and, and is the original relationship. And while you keep focusing on that, let me do a little Moana piece here. I had my picture taken with her when I was in Hawaii. Eka Moana Nui, Kai Hanu, Elana Maile, Kaumau Ale. Oh, thou. Great ocean, thou deep seas, might your waves flow buoyantly. E kamakani nui ikaika, e pa kolo nahe male O thou great wind blowing, breathe softly and quietly. O kawahini ia wai olola, O thou woman of the broad waters, my ho'opa, let nothing bar your way. Amana. Yoa, Noah, uh -oh. So let me come back here and, and uh, to recall this, I might you know continue some of this you know next time or another time. Uh, it's very abundant and it's uh, really really very important. I really don't know, even though there are turtle clans in some of the First Nations. <coughs> I don't know how much of the knowledge that here I have uh, recalled from India, or India that very much is uh, still is, whether India and Native America have had an actual relationship, I think maybe. I see enough in both cultures to see that something uh, exchanged here. I think, I think that we are here, and I definitely think that uh, as people become, can become more acquainted with the mythology, the history, divinities, and all those things of India, which is very accessible and very well documented, and still a very vital growing uh, Hindu uh, uh, way of living, uh, is still very available for people. 
So all of that, you know, is in consideration in this, and I put this together with this memory of continuance. So with that, uh, aho. Aho. Uh -huh.